It was, I pro that prob that year was probably the most like beneficial, but also hard year mm -hmm. of my whole life. So you're looking at mission value of yeah. the organization. Oh yeah. How that matches these people looking for grants, how this partnership can help. Mm -hmm. I think I scared him a little bit at first. <laughs> um, Cause I kind of came in with, you know, this is what I've been doing for the last seven, eight years. So this is like my, like, I, this is my field. And so I feel like I, you know, got all of these ideas and I get overexcited. So this is NCC Unplugged. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. We really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to listen to our podcast. We have a lot of different conversations. We have cultural interaction. Um, with this podcast, we are actually interviewing someone and uh, I'm excited to be joined in the studio here with Garrett Crawford, our Minister of Outreach and Small Groups. Did you call it a studio? It is a little bit. <laughs> what, what else would it be? I don't know. I didn't know we referred to the balcony as a studio now. It's, you know, we're big time. Well, there goes the podcast, Garrett. All right. Um, I should have skipped introducing him, but who I really want to introduce to you, uh, our guest for today, Grace Fowler. Hello. <laughs> Grace Fowler's, uh, well, she'll get to why she's here in a little bit, but uh, Grace, start us, start us off talking about yourself a little bit. How long have you been coming to NCC? Uh, all that good stuff. Yeah, I've been coming to NCC as long as I can remember. Um, my parents started going here when I was a kid, so I have been, I've never really known another church. Um, I started, yeah, so I started coming to kids' classes, and then I was really involved in middle school, high school youth group where you were the mis youth minister at the That's time. That's right. Um, so better believe it. Yeah, it feels like forever ago. Um, and then I was involved with, so yeah, so youth group and then uh, the worship team when we started the bridge when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and then I now, oh, and I did Camp Christian. I worked um, there two, three summers, I think, yeah. um, as a camp counselor for the junior high week, which I absolutely loved. Awesome. And then now I help, or I teach first and second grade um, every other Sunday. So, yeah. So super involved. It's been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of experience, different age groups, different things. Uh, we were talking earlier before we started about singing. You had a lot of that in high school, and uh, yes, so did. that was really cool. So, what's your best story of Jeff as oh, a youth boy. minister? We, no, we need to keep going, Garrett. Why? Who <laughs> invited? <laughs> get, no, just that's a good question. Is there My like favorite story it, of Jeff? Maybe not favorite, but something that sticks out. That's a good question. Um, I remember when you broke your ankle at camp. Okay. Oh, I didn't, I didn't break know about it. that. <laughs> Sprained it, something. I don't remember. <sighs> yeah, how much time would we spend on this story? So, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 was, it was definitely my worst in injury ever as a youth minister. Yeah, it was um, scary. I was scared. The, the, from what I understand, the ligament pulled off the bone. Yeah. Oh. So, like, pulled a chunk of bone off, which, Jeez. and I quote, the doctor said, happens to uh, Olympic <laughs> athletes a lot. So you're basically an Olympic athlete. Because that's what I heard. <laughs> you are like, you're putting your body through so much, like it yeah. just physically can't do it. And so, so you're um, just that's what I was willing to do for these junior hires. To say a life of a youth minister. And then like, I didn't even know it, right? Because I'm like, I need to put on a bold face and like, mm -hmm. I was the dean of the camp, so, so I, I couldn't go to the hospital. are you an Olympic athlete? You're just tough. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I, I, was on a crutch the rest of the week, just kind of going through it. And then I'm like, yeah, I, should. I probably didn't say, yeah, I should probably get it checked out. It was probably my wife. And so probably. I'm glad I did. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> that was a very um, divergent path. So that's all right. That's what we do. Um, so tell us a little bit about, so outside of church, what has your life been like? So you're not in high school anymore. Mm -hmm. You went to college, all that. Tell us what your life has been like, what you're doing. Yeah, it's been kind of all over the place. So after I left here, I graduated high school and I went to Lee University, which is a really small school in Tennessee. Um, and I got my uh, my undergrad degree in business administration and nonprofit management emphasis with my minor in social work. Um, and so I was there for three years um, and I just, I really loved it because I, it was just a really cool experience to go away from home for a little bit and just really grow on my own. Um, and Lee is a Christian school. So I got to be involved with like small groups my first year. Um, and then the second year was like the COVID year. So my sophomore year, I was there um, 
I went home for spring break my sophomore year and then we never went back wow. until um, until later that fall and it was just so different. Mm-hmm. So my last mm-hmm. year was really not a f- true college experience, but I loved all of it. Um, and so I, I did a lot of like on-campus work. I, I got to work in the admissions office and do campus tours, which I really loved. Um, I worked in the Title IX office and mental health office. And then um, also I got to work with um, incoming freshman students. So I was a peer leader um, and I got to be a TA for um, for the incoming freshman classes, which I, again, I just really loved getting to do all of those different things, working with a lot of different people. Um, and then while I was there, I did an internship at uh, the United Way that was down there. So I got to work with community organizations. We did um, like events where we kind of gathered the community and uh, we did like a community resource expo so people could come and, you know, find all of the available resources for them in, in the area. And it was just a, a lot of really cool. I was able to do a lot of real life practical things at the time while I was getting my degree. So um, and after that, I came home um, 2021. I graduated and then I started grad school at Pitt. Um, I started a master's program in public administration and again, it was it was still really post COVID. So it was I went to class and then I came home. I wasn't really mm-hmm. on campus that much, um, and so uh, I was able to get my master's in public administration. I finished that in 2023, um, and then after that, I mean, that entire time I was working um, remotely for Duquesne Light Company, doing their corporate giving and volunteerism program. So that was kind of the bulk of my work experience was was those years. And so um, it was just a really, really cool opportunity to get involved with organizations in the community, but kind of do mutually beneficial partnerships with um, with nonprofits. So, you know, we gave them money, we did community giving, but we also, you know, were able to volunteer with them and they were involved with our employees and like all kinds of stuff. So it was a really cool experience, really cool growth experience. And then um, after that, I... It was a lot harder to find a full-time job after graduating mm-hmm. um, than I expected it to be. So I I spent about like eight months or so working retail. I worked at Athleta, which is, um, it's a B corporation. So I won't go into that too much, but it's a sustainable, like a sustainable business practices and things like that. Um, and so I, I was there, I, I worked at retail um, at the mall and then I, I got a management position in, um, in Oakland or in Shadyside. And so- it was just kind of, I was submitting applications constantly and it was, I, pro- that prob that year was probably the most like beneficial, but also hard year mm-hmm. of my whole life because I think I expected it to be, you know, there's, I'll just get a job when I graduate. Yeah. And it was, it was not like that. And so as someone who likes to have control over mm. my life and planning, <laughs> I had a very hard time with that. So, um, but then I, st- I did a seasonal, uh, inter- or not a job, seasonal seasonal program with National Philanthropic Trust starting in October of last year. So they hire extra people around giving season because they do, they administer uh, donations through like donor advised funds. And so it gets kind of crazy at the end of tax season. So they hire extra people at the time um, just for their, for their volume and their workload. And I was hoping to get a job there after that was over, but they didn't have anything available. So I then went back to ap- uh, like applications again. Um, and then I finally, about like a month and a half, two months ago, uh, got a full-time offer from them. So they had something open up and it just was really, really good timing. Um, but yeah, I learned so much about myself. I've been all over the place. Um, being home with my parents has been wonderful. Um, are yeah. they, are they listening right now? Is that why you're they might that? be listening? <laughs> I don't know. I don't okay. know if they will listen. So, so let me get a picture of what your work was done. Cause it sounds like you, you were doing a lot while you're still in school. Yeah. And you're figuring out whether you liked it or not. Yes. How you could use this. So like you said, you were working for Duquesne like mm-hmm. to, to give, uh, to organize corporate giving. So give us, give us a picture of what that looks like. So a company has money and says, we yes. want to do some good with, let's say $10,000. Mm-hmm. But, but they're hiring you or they're looking for input from you why and and how do you process that how do you come alongside them yeah so um the reason i i got that job is i skipped a big chapter of my career actually was in high school i st- i worked at the community foundation of westmoreland county and i did a summer internship with them that was called a youth philanthropy program and so they had uh, students from high school kind of come and do exactly what I ended up doing at Duquesne Light. 
um, which is the only reason I was able to get that job is because mm. I had that experience. So really what you do is you have this sum of money. I always make a joke when somebody asks what I do. I say, I give away other people's money. That's yeah. not <laughs> mine, but I give it to community oh, that's organizations. That's awesome. That's what I want to do. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> wonderful. Um, Cause I don't have to pay, but I get to just give money everywhere. And so I was able to work at Duquesne Light. So what they had was they had this certain amount of money. And when I started, they started this new program that was called the Community um, Community Impact Grant Program. And so they did micro grants. So a micro mm. grant is like anything between like $500 to $10,000 was the max. And so we had organizations apply if they wanted the funding. And then these all had to be organizations whose budgets were under $500,000 a year. So really small kind of mm -hmm. grassroots nonprofits. Um, and so they would apply, the application was super short and they just kind of said like, this is what our program is. This is what our budget is like applying for the money. And so we kind of just gathered all of those applications. Um, I think the first cycle we did, we had like 140 people, organizations apply just in the Pittsburgh area. And so uh, my job was to kind of sift through those to, from the beginning and just kind of weed out the ones that might not fit with what we were looking for. Um, or, and then kind of push forward the top like 20 or, th or 30 of, of those organizations and programs, um, to our like committee that then kind of approved it and they discussed which ones they wanted to fund. And then we narrowed it down to then decide which organizations we wanted to give the funding to. Yeah. So you're looking at mission value of yeah. the organization, Oh yeah. how that matches these people looking for grants, how this partnership can help. Mm -hmm. So that brings us a little bit to Garrett and why mm -hmm. Garrett now knows you and has invited <laughs> you on this podcast to talk a little bit. So Garrett, give us a little bit of background um, on that. Well, I knew Grace before this because she was a student when I was an intern. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, I didn't just yeah. meet her because of this. Well, okay. But yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, I didn't yeah. realize um, what her background was in. <clears throat> Until we, the leadership council, we decided um, we had a surplus of budget um, here, for the at last, the here at the church, yeah. here with NCC, for the last few years. And we didn't want that surplus to just sit in a f account and not be, right. cover any needs. And so we decided to take a portion of that surplus and we're using it to help ministries and outreach programs or partnerships in our community um and to use this funds not to just say here you you know like oprah you get a dollar you get a dollar you get a dollar <laughs> but to use it as a way to build a relationship with these yeah. these um ministries um and it's been really great so far um so the original allotment was 180,000 um we have distributed about 75 of that um, and then we quickly realized the team that we had put together that was dis de deciding where to distribute this money, it was too much for us to do <laughs> and sift through and try to figure out without any expertise in this area. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, Rich, um, uh, one of our el elders, Rich Seaman, Seaman. Yeah. Um, said, hey, I just met with uh, the Fowlers, had dinner at the at their house, and did you know Grace does nonprofit work and like <laughs> distributes funds and things like that to charities? And so from there, we just um, asked her to come on board, and she's really been guiding the evolution of this mm -hmm. team to be something more than just here's a surplus, let's get rid of it, yeah. to be a ministry an outreach arm, an, an arm of our outreach to, to build more partnerships. Um, one of our goals with outreach, because there's a lot of overlap with outreach and missions. And so we've, the way we've kind of delineated it is outreach is focusing on the Jer Jerusalem and Judea. So the, the call to, to spread the gospel Jesus gave the disciples was go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to all of Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. um, and so we think of that more of like the Jerusalem would be the North Huntington, Jeanette, like area. The, the Judea would be spread out to like McKeesport, North for sales, Greensburg, Westmoreland County. And then uh, Samaria, you're reaching out into the greater Pittsburgh area. And so there's some overlap with outreach and missions 
to a certain extent, especially considering that greater Pittsburgh area. Um, but our big target is that is our community around us. We want to reach out into that community so that we can teach all to follow Jesus. But we want to do that by partnering with other existing outreaches. Right. And so this funding is a great way to start that partnership. But we, on that team, because the team started with a group from the leadership council, and none of us had any expertise in you know, building those partnerships, building those outreach. Yeah, and I think something you guys came up and what I've heard in the past is it's hard to give away money yeah. like, in, a, in a good way, in a yeah. sustainable way where you're not just saying, okay, here's $500, do whatever yeah. you want with it, because we're a church that cares. Yeah, We're a church that doesn't just want stuff to go to people without them hearing about the gospel. Mm-hmm. Um and so you're using the word partnership, yeah, because you're using it intentionally in that it's not just a hand out yeah. or just a, you know, okay, it sounds like you're doing good things. Uh, there's there's a lot of that out there. Yeah. We want to do more than just sounds good. And so we we kind of reframed our outreach here recently that anything that's considered an NCC program is something that we do in-house, so okay. to speak. So like the food pantry, that would be an NCC outreach program. We do all of that mm-hmm. you know, through our resources, through <clears throat> established through us. Uh, the Blessing Boutique would be an NCC outreach program. A partnership is where we come alongside something already in our community that's established, like the Father's Heart. We've yeah. done a lot of partnering with them lately or uh, the Dream Center in McKeesport. So another organization, maybe even another church. Yeah, that that already has some, they, they're meeting a specific need in the community. Mm-hmm. We don't want to overlap them mm-hmm. and try to do what they're Take already doing. Over. We just, right. yeah, we want right. to just partner alongside of them. And this funding has been a great way to start those partnerships, but there's a lot to sift through, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, we're not trained to do that. And so Grace is. And yeah. so she's kind of come on board to help out with that. So what have you seen, Grace, since you've been on board with that? Have you seen some of what Garrett's talking about, just how difficult it is to figure out these partnerships? I think I scared him a little bit at first because <laughs> um, I kind of came in with, you know, this is what I've been doing for the last seven, eight years. So this is like my, like, I, this is my field. And so I feel like I, you know, got all of these ideas and I get overexcited. So, um, but yeah, so I feel like it really has been, it's been cool to kind of just see like what we've already done so far. And like, and I said, you know, when I was at Duquesne Light, the most we gave away at one time was like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars. And it's like, that's how much we have here. And it's like, we're a small church in North Huntington versus mm-hmm. an entire corporation that provides power to all of Pittsburgh. So it's like, <laughs> We have, there's so much opportunity here to do something really cool with this money. Um, And I think, you know, exactly expanding on, you know, what Garrett was saying, like we have the programs that we do in-house, but the partnerships, there's really, there's really a heart for that here. And I think, you know, it's, it's the mutually beneficial relationship aspect of it. And it's, you know, we have something to contribute to them, but they also have something to contribute to us in that, you know, we can volunteer with them. We can get involved with them on a long-term basis Mm. and, grow those partnerships. Um, And so it's really cool to see like, cause I don't know of any churches that want to do this type of program. Like it's Mm -hmm. a very like corporate philanthropy foundation type thing, but like it's, it's a great opportunity for our church to, to be that example in the community of, of, you know, we have all this money, we can do it in a really cool way that involves a lot of people at the church as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where do we start? Mm -hmm. (laughs) With with that, like, where do you come? Wh- what have you been doing? Because this is, I mean, you guys have been, when did you come on board a few months ago with this? Not even that? Not even that, yeah. So this is still early. Yeah. But where's where's our first step? What are we looking forward to doing? Do you want to take that? Um, <laughs> so the first step's already kind of been taken as, like I've said, we've already distributed some of it. Mm-hmm. And we've put some parameters on as far as what, partnerships we're looking, what ministries and organizations we're looking to partner with. We want to make sure that they're Mm -hmm. gospel-centered. We're not necessarily asking that they're restoration movement or things like that. We just want to make sure that Christ is at the center. Mm -hmm. They align with us on Scripture, too, as far as... um, When I say that, I, I mean, I don't mean that 
they hold all the same things on the important the, box, the you know, essentials. but they're, they all hold they all the, the same essentials, essentials as us. Yeah. Like going back to that sermon series, which we go back to all the time. We it's do. crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but that those we've kind of established those parameters, started the process and we've realized that. And one of the things that Grace said when she came on board was we need to get this to the entire church, uh, mm-hmm. open it up as an opportunity for people to join in with us. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of where it's, that's where the next step's been. We don't want to just do this behind the scenes. We want people, everyone to know, Hey, this is an awesome opportunity for our outreach at NCC to expand. Um, we're not just doing this haphazardly we Mm -hmm. want people to join in on it. And so that's where grace is coming. She's going to kind of lead the charge in expanding it and training and bringing, helping us to bring on, you know, new people. So I guess you can take over from that point. I'm yeah. done. I can, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's, yeah, that's, that background is important. And I think, you know, my, my brain is like business nonprofit. And so I think like we talk about the concept of stakeholders and about all of the people that kind of have a stake in what, what mm-hmm. you're doing. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, the church has been so generous with their money that like, that's why we have this opportunity to do it in the first place and to give people an opportunity to participate in that distribution, I think is really important because, and again, like nonprofits are all about like transparency and accountability to like to donors and to things like that. And so I think, you know, giving people an opportunity to be part of how that money gets spent, I think is not only a cool opportunity, but also like they deserve to have, you know, an understanding of how their money and their dollars are being spent. So I think, you know, that, that is the first, the first step is kind of, starting to do that. And, and we've had a lot of different, we kind of narrowed it down to different ideas, but you know, it's also hard to know how many people will want to participate. And so I think that is going to dictate what our next steps kind of are. Cause you know, you could get, you could say something to the church and like two people want to participate. You just don't know. So, or you could get a hundred or whatever. And I think it's, it's giving an opportunity for whoever wants to participate to be involved in some way. We just don't know exactly what that's going to look like until we open it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and that's kind of what this is here. Yeah. It's yeah, an opportunity right. for us to lay the groundwork of, hey, this is something that we've been doing and we're wanting to evolve it and to open right. it up. And hopefully from here, <clears throat> we'll have, you know, we'll make an announcement and, and start give it, setting up some opportunities for people to join in and listen and, and have some kind of, um, some more Q and A's. Grace is probably going to get sick of explaining it. But I could talk about this all day. It's okay. <laughs> so where do we go from here? Um, if we say, Hey, the first step is making people aware, which mm-hmm. is important. Uh, what would it look like going forward? If somebody's like, man, that, yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I, I'm, I want to learn what's out in the community. I want to know how we're yeah. partnering with them. What, what would that look like for someone that wants to take the next step on that? So I think, you know, we had talked a a few weeks ago about doing like an info session meeting where, you know, you could ask questions and a few, I can't remember when it was a few weeks ago, I kind of gave a little presentation to the, to the outreach council um, who lead the different ministries at the church, just about kind of this whole, what we're coming, where we're coming from and what the whole program might look like. Um, And I think, you know, doing something similar to that, to anybody who might be interested. And then we go into like, people want to sign up and, you know, kind of, kind of navigating like who might be a really good fit, like who has this background. And, and again, you know, you might have two people or 50 people sign up and, and Garrett suggested maybe like doing multiple groups of people. So mm-hmm. if we have too many that sign up, which would be a great problem to have, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe doing two or three groups and dividing up the money we want to spend to like those groups in that way. So we can kind of navigate it, um, in a, in a way that everybody who wants to be involved can be in so, some way. So like thinking if we have this pot of a hundred thousand, right. You know, one group would be focusing on um, uh, at-risk pregnancy organizations. One group would be focusing on um, homelessness, youth, homelessness organizations, yeah. and each group would get a certain allotment of that pot. Yeah. Okay. And, and so that's what we would do if we had a lot of people interested, which would be great. Yeah. But yeah, and so kind of to give context in this too, there's there's something called a giving circle that they do in nonprofit and foundation spaces where 
it's kind of a similar thing where you have a certain like amount of money and then which in those cases, usually it's a group of donors. They all kind of pull their money together, each give like a thousand dollars or whatever, and then kind of group together that way. And then they go through kind of a process of, you know, they do strategic planning and to figure out where they want to give their money to. Again, talking about mission and, and goals for, for the for the funding and then. Um, from there, you kind of figure out where you want to, what nonprofits you want to invite to give money to, like mm-hmm. invite to apply, um, and then kind of working through who applies and, and kind of narrowing down what fits with what you're trying to accomplish through your funding. Mm-hmm. And so obviously it'll look different in a church setting versus like a foundation setting, but I think the same general framework will apply, like doing some sessions of like figuring out. And I think the thing that I'm the most passionate about, about this type of giving is that it's very intentional. Like it's not just kind of, you know, oh, we really like this organization. So here's Mm $50,000. It's like before you even get into nonprofits, because again, it's so much to sift through and there's so many nonprofits in the area, like hundreds just in, you know, our our county and our, Mm -hmm. our city. And so I think, you know, having goals from the beginning, like these are the types of organizations we want to fund so that when you get all of these nonprofits that you might want to fund, you have kind of a a standard, like a baseline for what you're actually looking for before you kind of get those applications. So I think like being really intentional about how you want to give and that makes sure that you're not only, again, it goes back to transparency and accountability, but also like making sure you're using the funds in a way that is actually doing good and not just like kind of throwing it all around. Like you said, like Oprah, yeah. like you just don't want to just yeah. give it everywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that would be kind of the next, the next step would and, be. And then that. going beyond it, we, we don't intend for it to be, you know, <clears throat> we give a hundred thousand dollars and we disband. Right. So one of the other things that the leadership council brought up is that with certain, you know, we're pretty good with managing the the budget um, mm-hmm. that we have, we set each year, and our NCC is so generous and mm-hmm. wanting to help. And a lot of times we do have these surpluses, and so we'll allot a certain amount to make sure that it becomes recip- like cyclical, that we're mm-hmm. constantly investing into our community, and we're using funds similar to how we do with um, the missions budget. We're using this designating a certain amount to build partnerships, right. to reach out and to establish more um, year after year, not mm-hmm. just simply let's get rid of this and move on. Right. You know, I just want to make sure that everyone understands that we're not just trying to check a box here. We're trying mm-hmm. to build a cycle. Yeah. 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 So moving forward, we're going to talk about this more um, as it seeps out through this conversation to other places in the church. And so if, if somebody's interested, do they come talk to you to come talk to Grace? Yeah, I think either or, um, w- right now, the people that have been in the background with this is, um, you know, me and Grace and then Jim Murray and Mike Hetrick, and Duke Weber, we've all kind of been mm-hmm. having a hand in it as it's gotten to this point. And now, um, Grace would probably be the one that's taking the lead, mm-hmm. um, but we're all still the the four of us are still involved in that. Um, and then we also Grace mentioned the the outreach council outreach team. That's just a a group of leaders that oversee different outreaches programs and partnerships that we already have. Um, and so some of the people in that team know about it as well, but. Um, I'd say the first point of contact would be, yeah, me or Grace, yeah. if anyone's interested. Um, and here soon, I think we'll do an announcement and mm-hmm. have a little bit more information on how you can get plugged in, um, do like a little informational meeting um, for people to learn more about it and, and maybe sign up to to join that team. Mm-hmm. Um, so just kind of be on the lookout for that. Yeah. yeah. So... I mean, this is a huge opportunity as a church, as uh, anyone listening can get involved in it as part of NCC. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not an opportunity to be like, oh, yeah, my brother had a great business opportunity. I'm going to try to get him some money yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, is a very intentional, purposeful, uh, being very aware that this money, uh, it needs to be steward, stewarded yes. well. Oh, yeah. And Grace has spoken to the intentionality of that. And so... Um, we're just excited to to talk about this and present this. Um, Grace, anything anything else to share before we go as far as 
um, how people can get involved, what it would look like to involve future steps, anything, anything else that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, I think the, the key thing is just, you know, just what a cool opportunity this is. And, and again, like, yes, this is what I've been doing for seven years, but like, there's so much that I don't know. And I'm fully aware of that. So I think, you know, we could get into this and, you know, there's so many nonprofits that I don't even know of. And I've worked with literally hundreds mm -hmm. and it's just like, there's so many organizations already doing such cool work in the community. And like Garrett said, we don't want to overlap with them. We just want to partner with them mm -hmm. in that. And so, um, I just, I think, you know, there's so many people in the church that have, you know, they've done volunteering, they've done their personal giving, they've done all of these different things already. And I think that's why I'm really excited to kind of get a lot more people involved because mm -hmm. they're all going to have these diverse backgrounds and passions and interests in kind mm -hmm. of the social impact space. And I just think, you know, it's a really, really great way for us to kind of reach out, but bring every kind everybody can kind of bring their own their own background and, and diverse experiences. So I think, I think it'll be a really cool, I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, like, yeah. again, it's hard to know how many people want to participate. Yeah. Like I could just, you know, yeah, I don't know. So I think it's, it's going to be really, really awesome to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just want to speak a bit to the unique opportunity that this is as a church. Yeah. Um, to be in a place as a church, being a healthy church with a healthy budget. Yeah. And leaders that sat in a meeting together and led by the elders said, if our purpose here on earth is to make disciples, mm -hmm. that doesn't happen when money is in a bank account. Right. Um, and so many people in that same position, and maybe you've heard at other churches, maybe you've been in a leadership position where you're like, yeah, but when the shoe falls, yeah, but on a rainy day, mm -hmm. yeah, but when God doesn't come through. And our leader said, God always comes through. He, he's led us this far. He's not going to let us down in a year. And so we don't have to save for a rainy day. Yeah, we want to be wise with our money. Right. Um, but to the point to say we're giving over $100,000 to partner organizations right. that further making disciples, maybe in a different way than we do here at church, but they still need to know about who Jesus is. And so we're willing to step out in faith in this way. Um it's humbling for me to to be in a con I remember that meeting and going, yeah. Wow, I don't <clears throat> could I say that about my own finances? <laughs> yeah. And so mm -hmm. for these people to say this about uh, the church and where we are and, and that we're just God has brought us to this point when man, there's a lot of maybe pet projects we could do, or Garrett talking about, hey, we've been very careful with the budget. You know, well, if we didn't have to, what could we do with this and how could we but we're willing to do it because we know these partnerships uh, can really lead us into some great creative places where uh, the gospel continues to be advanced yeah. right. and not just sitting in a bank account. And so yeah. we're excited to see God move in a lot of different ways. And we hope uh, that some of you listening and as we continue to talk about this in different places would get involved in this and be part of uh, the outreach team, part of this team that looks at this disbursement funds to where they could go and maybe brings brings needs our way and says, hey, I've heard about this nonprofit. They're small, but they're starting this initiative. Uh, maybe that's the role you play in this. Um, but we know as a church, we all have a role to play in different areas. And so we're excited about this kind of new area. Yeah, maybe things. someone's role is to come up with a good name because like I've I haven't thought of like <laughs> I've just Garrett called the name the outreach the financial outreach disbursement team. <laughs> That's like what I've come up with. <laughs> I feel like partnership, like community partnerships team, is like yeah. I feel like that's like something that just describes you know what better. we're what we're doing. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, that's the goal. Doesn't need to be yeah. that complicated. Yeah. yeah, we'll work on it. Okay, we'll work maybe going to acronym. We'll figure it out. An acronym. If we were the government, it would be an acronym. It would be an acronym. <laughs> All right. Hey, with that, again, we really appreciate you watching or listening to another episode of NCC Unplugged. Thank you so much for taking some time, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 